Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now I've wanted to do United States Marines for a long time um, and I've finally gone ahead and picked up some of the kits. These guys are a lot of fun. They're also super simple to paint. Uh, the only really complicated bit, and I say complicated, it's just time consuming, is those uh, reversible camo helmet covers. But I'll show you how to do those and without any further mucking around, all of those paints will be listed in the description below. So let's get started. So we've begun by priming this guy with a quick spray of Grey Seer. And in honesty, any sort of light grey will do the job here. Uh, you could even use Army Painter's Uniform Grey, it doesn't really matter too much. I've gone for a very light start, because if I get any of this sort of primer showing through, or an imperfect coverage, a grey will help sort of sell the worn, sun-bleached, kind of, you know, faded look. And that's going to be ideal for our Marines. The first colour we're going to use is Green Grey, and this is... Well, Vallejo actually has two colours that are called Green Grey in English, so I'll make sure I include the number code for it as well. Uh, ironically, we're actually going to use both versions of Green Grey, so the first one that's going to go on is this sort of faded... You see how easy that is. You'll see this doesn't take much to go on. We'll just go around the whole model. And I'm not being particularly careful if I hit areas like his gaiters or, or what have you. We're just wanting all of his uniform grey-green. Now I've just been calling it grey-green and green-grey interchangeably. I know some folks can be a little, you know, they don't like the names of the Citadel range, but at least I can always tell the difference between Rakarth flesh and Pallid Witch flesh and all that carry on. Uh, green-grey, this is the one we've started with, and green-grey, this is the one we're going to dry brush with. And as you can see, they are very, very different colours. So you are not going to mix these up, okay? Uh, what we're going to do now, though, is move on to our little bit of green-grey. I've got a little bit of this squirted onto some kitchen towel down here. And here is one of my makeup brushes. Uh, these are brilliant for dry brushing. These soft bristles will make sure that it's actually quite difficult for you to put too much on the miniature. So, good one if you're looking to do a very subtle dry brushing effect, which we kind of are here. So I'm going to work that into my brush and run it over the paper a few times until I'm leaving next to nothing left. And then we bring them on up here and we want to start lightly flicking against areas of detail. So raised edges like the edge of a sleeve here, you see we're catching that already. Uh, there's a couple of folds on the back of his shirt here. Uh, you don't have to go overboard with this. And indeed, it's probably better if you're a little sparing with it in some areas. But this is just a really quick way to give us a little bit more fading and that proper salty look. Now, after a couple of passes around with the dry brush, this is what we'll have. And as you'll see, that's a really quick and very simple way to get some sort of pre-highlighting on your uniform there. Really great for that faded look. As always, remember that it's easier to have too little on your brush and have to add some more than to start by having too much on your dry brush and just <laughs> covering them in it. So <laughs> take your time with that one. What I've got here now, this is some beige red, and I'm going to paint his skin in this. Uh, there's not really a correct answer for this. Um, I just like beige red because of how well it covers. And it looks a little light going on. But once we've shaded it, you know, there's a couple of tricks coming. Uh, you'll probably find that this will go on a nice light primer like this. Maybe in one coat, but of course, you'll always be the judge of whether or not you need to come back and give it a second, just to make sure you've got a nice solid colour. Now we'll move on and do his helmet cover. Now these were two-sided reversible covers, so there was actually two colours to them. We're going to do the green side, and for this I'm starting here with pastel green. If you wanted to do the brown side, something like Iraqi sand would be a better choice. Uh, but all you need to do is give this a quick coat and then we'll get on to drawing some dots on it. Uh, this same technique, set of colors, all that, this will work for any uh, camouflage covers that they've got on their packs as well. So if you've got a fella who's still huffing that great big bloody pack <laughs> through the jungle, you can use this on there too. Now we can start applying our little camo dots. And we're gonna start off first with English uniform. Uh, this is a sort of a khaki, greenish tone to it, so it's ideal for our first splotches. 
Now, don't worry too much if you know this doesn't look perfect, because at this kind of scale, you know, we're not really worried about 100% accuracy. We just want to give the impression of these old covers. Now, just a few dots of this. Try to keep it as random as you can, and don't forget, do go to the edges in some places. And then you can do the same thing again with some flat brown. Now you do want a little bit of overlap with your uh, English uniform splotches. But same thing again, just random little blobs to help break up the shape of this helmet. And then finally, I have some US dark green. And you guessed it, more spots. <laughs> uh, if you are doing the brown covers, then they actually didn't have the green spots. So if you do want to save a bit of time, then it's up to you. You can just skip these on those brown covers. Now with his helmet and any other camo covers done, we can start doing his webbing. For this, I'm using German camo beige. If you do want a slightly more faded version of this, then something like stone grey can also work quite well. Now we're starting to get into the home stretch. I've got here some leather brown, and we're just going to fill in his boots. There are a couple of other leather details on him, but we're going to do those in a different colour, because it will add just a little bit more, and I think you know, there is a bit of a difference between the leather of boots and the leather of equipment. So we'll paint these the darker colour, and then we'll switch to mahogany brown and paint in things like the leather straps on his helmet and the sheath on his k-bar here. This is really a matter of personal taste. Um, if you want to keep using leather brown for all of these, then of course that's up to you. Now we'll get some beige brown, and I'm going to use this for any wooden details. So if you had a full-on rifle, just paint the whole thing in with this now. Uh, there's Thompson's stock, uh, any entrenching tools if he happens to have one. And then finally for our base coats, any black details, well, I'll let you guess what color we're going to paint those. Now there is one final detail, which at this kind of scale is really up to you whether or not you want to paint it, uh, but you might spot here he's got quite prominent dog tags. So any sort of mid-tone silvery color will work for this. I'm actually using Citadel's Iron Hand Steel, uh, but let's flip him upside down and get in, you know, <laughs> I might just do this off camera, this is a little fiddly. Uh, this is one that will need a steady hand and a bit of patience. Can I get in there? Yeah, I can. But I think your finished product will look that much cooler for having done that. Now at last, with all of those base coats applied, do any little tidy up stages you need to, and we can start applying our shade. Now for this, I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade. Uh, this is the Citadel color, but I know Vallejo does a sort of brown-black shade as well, as does the Army Painter if you want to use Strong Tone. But however it is, you know, whichever one you pick, we're just going to go over the whole miniature, making sure to work this into the recesses too. You really want to make sure that you aren't leaving any bright gaps as you go around. Now, some folks will say that this comes out a little shiny. Um, if you do have that issue, you know, give your give your shade a real good shake before you use it. It's pretty much the the first step to fixing that. But since we are going to varnish this fella. Um, it honestly won't matter too much if it does have a little bit of shine to it. Now, after 20 to 30 minutes, this is what you'll have. And, my goodness, what a difference that shade makes. Now, what we're going to do is just a couple of highlights. Um, you could quite happily put them on the table like this, after all. But I think there's a little bit of value in just spending that extra time just to make sure that some of these details really pop. So we're going to spin them around, and I've got here, this is Iraqi Sand. And we're going to use this to highlight just some of the edges of his webbing. So this, again, we're looking at a little bit of patience here. And I don't think I've actually got any on my brush. <laughs> uh, but if you apply this, you don't really have to be uh, tidy and perfect with this, to be honest. Let's just go ahead and add a little bit across the top of that pack there. Uh, corners of his ammo pouches. Just a little down this bit here. This is way easier without the camera, of course. Uh, you, I'll finish this off, and you guys can get a look at 
So we're just really kind of sketching out some of the edges of the edge of my brush here. Now we're going to head of myself a little bit here, but we're actually going to go back to uh, beige red and just pick out some of the higher areas of skin to tidy those up a little bit. Uh, you can leave them with that real dark sort of grimy finish. Now that will take a little bit of doing, and I think it's really just being fussy past the point, but I wanted to. So <laughs> I've also got here, this is some basic skin tone, still a Vallejo color. We're just going to do a couple of tiny little dots here and there, like on the back of his knuckles. And we'll do the tip of his nose. A little bit there. If you do a split line, you can give him an old big old cleft chin there. And then finally in the realm of not really necessary but looks cool when you do it, I've got here a little bit of gunmetal grey. This is a metallic colour. I'm just going to use the edge of my brush to trace along some of the edges of the black just to make a little bit of shine there. Now at last we can go ahead and give him his matte varnish, and for this I'm going to use the Vallejo Matte Varnish Spray. Then we'll go ahead and pop his base on him and get a look at what it looks like when he's all finished. And there we have it, our marine is complete. Now I've used just a little bit of clump foliage and some tufts on his base there to give sort of a three-dimensional effect. Um, for me, jungle bases, I kind of like when there's different layers of stuff on the ground rather than just a single flat thing. Um, if I had some aquarium plants, I'd probably try and cram a couple of bits of those on there as well. So as always, hopefully something there was interesting to you. If you have any questions or anything, feel free to drop in in the old comment box below. As always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all the patrons who are keeping me ticking over in paints and glue, including producers Alan Nuttall, Ben Hicks, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, and Connor. So. Thank you very much for your time, and good night, Chesty, wherever you are.